Kimberly, uh, she's not, she's always had this, but she's not practiced it very much. So I'm trying to help her, but when I, when I was praying, I turned around and I could see she was crying. She sees things, it's like she goes into a, a little bit of a, come on, you gonna share? You wanna, I have no idea what she's gonna share, but every time she shared, he said, you should have shared this. Okay, uh, when we were singing, I, I shut my eyes and what happens is I start going um, like almost like deep, deep in my mind and I could hear the words. And as we were all singing, I could see uh, Jesus was in a white robe and he had a brown sash across him and he was moving through the room and he was touching every person. Yes. He was touching every person. And I saw him touch touching people on their knees. I saw him touching people sitting. I saw him touching people standing. I saw him touching people in beds. So no matter where you are, he's, he's there and he's touching you. It's, it's very powerful and it moves me. So thank you for letting me share that with you. How many of you need a touch from the Lord? We, there are there are people that are not here. There are people that are in a bed. There are people that are sitting. They're standing. They're driving. Wherever they are, we're just declaring right now. Joyce, who has been a, a faithful servant for many years, she served here as my administrator. She also was involved in missions work. She needs a touch from God. Um, there are many that are struggling. That are not here that want to be here that are watching and it doesn't matter if you're wherever you are right now God is everywhere he's omnipresent he wants to touch you could you just you know and this is actually probably really good that we're sitting because we're not we're not trying to make something happen we're just resting in him right yeah. if you would just open your 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 arms and just kind of like just open up your your heart and just say, Lord, I thank you for your touch. He touched me. He made me, made me whole. He touched me. And he made me whole. Lord, we thank you. May you're so real, so present right now, wherever we are, around the world, you're touching people right now. You're not limited to this building. You're not limited because of our mind. You are everywhere. You're all powerful. You're everywhere right now, touching, touching people. We declare yes and amen. Yes and amen. It says virtue. Virtue flowed out of him. Lord, we thank you for your virtue that is flowing in right now. Your power that's flowing in. Your grace that's flowing in. Your love. As you're touching, Lord, you are pouring in to us exactly what we need. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we can be seated in your presence, that we can rest in your promises, that we are assured that it's fixed. see the presence of God over her, but I wanted to start to, to share what happens to her and how she feels. Uh, 
When I first came here, I was terrified. I've always been quiet, always afraid to speak up, always afraid to approach other people. And I came in, and people started approaching me and hugging me, and I thought, oh, my. <laughs> and pretty soon, it became acceptable. And I had a walker then. And I was afraid to go anywhere without my walker. And then slowly, and with a lot of help, I became brave. And I began to walk without my walker. Yeah. Yeah. And then and I became a little braver. <laughs> and to walk without my cane. And now, when I look around at everyone who is in this room, there is so much love yes. in this church. So much love. You cannot help but feel brave and stronger. Mm -hmm. And I am so eternally grateful. Thank you. I will. <laughs> anyway, um, Todd, where are you? All right, do you want to join me? Because I'm going to allow you to do the first announcement. Oh, but first, I have to greet everyone. Good morning, everyone here and out there. If you're a first time guest, we do have a uh, folder in the front pocket. And if you would like to fill out the constant connect, contact, we would love for you to do that because that gives us the opportunity to let you know everything that's going on in the church. And I will tell you, there is so much going on in this church that I could probably take the whole sermon time to tell you about it. However, I'm going to choose not to do that because we want to be blessed by Andrew. Pastor. Good morning, everybody. Today I feel blessed. I mean, I feel so blessed. I feel so loved. I mean, do we not feel the love in this amazing house of God this morning? <laughs> Little brief uh, testimony before I do get into my announcement. Um, speaking of the blessings, God just continues to shower me, blessing after blessing. Two of the most important to me, one is... Um, learning to wait on his time. I've been a very impatient person my whole life. I'm still a work in progress on that, but he's, he's working on me. Uh, my most important note is learning to, to listen to him. I can remember my early days just praying and praying and crying and talking. And um, I called a friend, I'm thinking, I don't know what to do. I've been praying, I'm crying. He, he just does not talk to me. I was wrong. Yes, there's a man up here saying he was wrong. But um, I'm learning to listen. You know, he was coming to me in my dreams, my early days, because I always prayed, you know, God, let me see my kids, let me see my dad. And he'd bring them to me. Um, sometimes it was like life was just going on. Everything was fine. But there was times I knew, I knew that he'd brought them, and I knew where they were at, you know, and I'd just wake up in a pile of tears and snot, and, but ha happy tears and a happy snot. <laughs> Now, a couple weeks ago, I was out at David's with the Jennifer Martin Tent Revival, and um, she brought up something we've heard numerous times, and that's talking about Satan, how he's out to kill, to steal, and to destroy. God sat next to me, and he really showed how this pertained to my life and why I spiraled out of control when I did. Now, most of you know I've buried two children, and that was my steal, which turned um, and stole my joy, stole my light, 
and eventually it, it destroyed my faith. You know, I, after Natasha got killed in that wreck, my world went dark, and I jumped over that fence, and I walked with Satan for a long time, done a lot of bad stuff I regret, but, you know, it's, a lot of it's made me who I am. A um, few days, June 5th, I'll be two years clean. But most importantly, that's also the day that God pulled me out of the darkness and brought me back to the light. Um, and for that, I'm eternally grateful, and I will serve him until my last breath. So that comes to what I'm up here for. Um, starting June 15th, which is a Saturday, we've had an emptiness here since David had left. Um, doors of the church are going to be open again on Saturday nights. Um, God had put this on me since the, the day I heard of, of you know, the, David's departure. Um, it's going to be a night of worship called Saturday Night Surrender. Um, it's not a Bible study. It's not a sermon. It's a night just to come in and, and praise the Father. If you need to strengthen your, your relationship with God, please come. If you need a relationship with God, please come. Um, we're going to start simple. Music, fellowship, testimony, prayer. Um, and I don't want the same thing week, week after week after week. You know, I, I, I'm looking for ideas. Anybody got some suggestions? I've already got a few, like maybe every now and then we'll have a movie night maybe. Uh, throw in maybe some karaoke here and there. I want a fun and relaxing night. So please come join me. We're starting June 15th. It'll be from 7 to 9 o'clock in the cafeteria. Thank you, guys. That's what's so exciting about this church because um, we have life groups every day except for Monday because the church is closed Monday. So Tuesday we have Alice and John's Holy Spirit class. Wednesday we have Jay, I forget what it's called, a word with God. There you go. Oh, growing in the world word. How about that? And then we have Jerry with the uh, kids over in the um, Life Center. Thursday, Women of the Word in Pastor Andrew's office and Men of Courage. And then um, Friday night is Harvest with John Huffman. And then Saturday, the new group with um, Todd. Some other business. The um, Sunday school Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings are really in need of volunteers to help out. And if you have the time, the church would love for you to help us. And please see Kimberly. Should I direct them to you? Okay, thank you. The other thing is the new devotion is out, and if you do not have the booklet, you can always go on the app on Uversion and pull it up. That's actually how I do it every day. So that's a fun thing to do and a very important thing to do to start your morning with your devotion. We also have Paul Long's Ministries with Know Your Bible. Learn how to be successful in every area of your life, spiritual, intellectual, financial, physical, and in your relationships. And Paul will set you up with a coach. It's for free, and you also receive a Bible. Guess what? July 4th is coming up, and we're going to participate in the July 4th parade. There'll be a sign-up out front. And I'm going to add that uh, my husband, John, has this uh, truck that can hold the whole church. And um, so we don't necessarily have to walk. You can just come on board and um, have a ride with John. Oh, we'll get a crane or something to help us. Right, John? Uh, you'll have a lift for us, no problem. All righty. A really exciting thing this summer is Vacation Bible School. Emily um, Pagan is putting that together, and JR. It's going to be 
June 24th through the 28th, teaching games, teaching games, crafts, snacks, and super special time for the children. It's going to be Monday through Thursday from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. and Friday from 6 to 8.30 p.m. for family. So any, any volunteers that are needed for that, please um, out front, we have all these sign-up sheets for you to um, volunteer. Okay, guest speaker on June 9th. Exciting. All righty, now for the special time of tithing. And the, I know. And the verse that I, God laid on my heart this week is Malachi 3, 8 through 10. Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for the whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it, put me to the test. And I will tell you, I've tried it and I've put God to the test. And what it is, it's just having faith. And faith is hearing the word of God. Have you prepared to give God what he deserves? God wants to show you his abundance, and he will when you have faith in him. So, Father God, we just come before you right now. We open our eyes, our heart, and our ears to hear and receive all that you have for us, Father God. And we just, in turn, want to honor you by giving all that we have for you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen.
Why don't you stand up real quick, turn around while the music's playing, and say, hey, I'm glad I'm here. I'm being touched by God, I'm being touched by Jesus. a word for you three ladies. God loves you more than chocolate. And that's from Pennsylvania. Hershey. Okay, you may be seated. Um, I, um, Kimber, Kimberly, Kim, and, and John are leaving this week to go to Chicago, both for different, well, you're going for family and he's going for business. I, is she going to go with you? Yeah, see, uh, okay. So, you know, so we need to we need to lift them up, and Kimberly's going back to be with her with her kids and and so forth. She's going to be gone for a few months, and so if you don't see her, she's not abandoning us. She's just taking off and taking care of some family stuff. So remember her in prayer. Let's stretch out our hands to to. I'm I'm just declaring some great things for John, uh, and for this Chicago needs a breakthrough, and so we got two lights that are going to walk into that place, right? Amen. So, Father, we just thank you for your supernatural touch, for your abundance, your favor. And I ask, Lord, for divine wisdom, for, Lord, wherever we are, you are. And, Lord, I just ask that you would just manifest your grace and your wisdom to them and allow your favor to be upon them. And, Lord, reveal what you want to bring forth through their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know. Something's going to come forth, John. Something's going to happen. So um, we're, we're blessed. I, I've been in this series for a while, and I, hopefully you've not been too bored with this thing, but it's called Talking About the Cloud. Well, I don't really care. If, I know it's not been boring. So the, the idea is, is to understand the importance of, a, of, of the presence of God and also the presence of God in individual people's lives, the corporate presence of God. And I think uh, with today's message, what I want to try to do is, is to, to bring a greater understanding in how that really works. And so I, I want, last week I kind of got caught up with the Passion Translation. So what I want to do today is just the beginning of the scripture that has been our theme. I want to use the Passion Translation and then we're going to go into the King James, New King James after that. It's just important that you know that I'm trying to explain some things to you that I believe the Holy Spirit has been stirring in me. And, and I know that he's not just stirring them in me just to keep for myself. But anything and everything that we have, we're supposed to give away. Uh, because it, I've been blessed to be a blessing. We're, we're a cloud to, to let the, the, the rain fall out of us. You know, the, the, the favor of God to flow through our lives. The reason you've been touched is so you can touch someone else. 
Let me say that again. The reason you were touched today is so you can touch someone else. And there's probably a pretty good guarantee it's not going to happen in church. It's going to happen out there somewhere. It's going to happen at home. It's going to happen wherever you go. And, uh, you know, it's important that you, you know that. Um, where's Ernest? Is Ernest in the town? Ernest is, Ernest is, uh, is part of the Morning Star ministry team. He has moved to Naples. Stand up, Ernest. Er, you're going to hear more about Ernest. But, uh, so the favor of God's on him, and, and the blessing that he's going to be to this church is going to be amazing, and you're going to see that unfold. So we're, we're going to get this ready. But let's read this in this translation because it sounds a little different. You know, I could say, since we're around, surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin. But I want to read it now in, in this translation. As for us... Who's he talking to? Okay, just double checking. We have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So every, everything that we read in the Bible in, in a way can encircle us and, and gives us a greater understanding of the presence of God and the favor of God in these people's lives. So we, we studied all those. We've talked about a lot of them, okay? So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us. Do you know how the enemy likes to use wounds to deceive us? Did you hear Todd say how the loss and certain things that happened in his life caused him to, to, to go away from God instead of towards him? Who's the healer? Who's the only one that can heal our wounds? By his stripes we are healed. And yet at the same time, so every wound that has pierced us and the sin which so easily fall into, we, we kind of fall into things. We don't even realize we've missed the mark. We've, we've compromised in some areas, but God wants to change all that. I'm telling you. Then we will be able to run life's marathon with passion and determination. See, once you realize that you don't need to deal with the wounds in your life and you really don't need to play around with sin, then you can run and enjoy and really go for it. And often we don't realize that we're carrying around weights and, and uh, thoughts and, 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 and compromise in our lives where we've settled when God says, I want to take you up higher. I want you to experience love and grace and forgiveness in ways that you've never even understood. So I want you to run the race. So often when we read this, we go, well, you know, i got to get rid of this. No, he wants you to run this marathon of life in a successful way. He doesn't want you. I don't know. How do, you, how do I explain this? You know, you ever see people that are just barely making it? Oh, my God. You know? <laughs> or you see someone, hey, life is good. God is great. Which one do you want to hang out with? You know, which one has lifted the wounds and the sins off of them and is running this race of life with passion? I want you to notice it says race with passion and determination because we know who we are. When you know who you are and you have the passion of God inside, you're determined to let go of some of this unnecessary crazy stuff that sometimes would like to manipulate us. Listen, the past is just the past. And we're living in the presence, and God wants us to know that his favor is on us right now. Right now, the path has been already marked out before us. Do you know how cool that is? God's made a way. He's made a way for us. Say that, for us, before us. We look away from the natural rim, and we fasten our gaze on, unto Jesus who birthed faith within us. I mean, I like to, sometimes when you read these different trans. He birthed faith within us. Matter of fact, he says, every one of us has a measure of faith. He's placed it in us. Now, what we do with that, what are we going to do with that? that, that, that we're going to nurture it. I, I, are you pregnant? You're not just eating for one anymore, are you? There's something that's been nurtured in you, and it's going to come forth. How many pregnant girls do we have in this house right now? We've got a, several of them, you know? That are bringing forth some, so, hey, they're, they're up there, they're up there, yeah. Uh, you know, and you can actually see it. See, when you birth faith, when it's, when it's brought forth inside of you, it starts showing. You know, to see the, I don't, have you ever noticed that pregnant women has a glow about them? Yeah. And also, ladies who, who, who are really loved, you notice they're, they're glowing too? Is that, is that why you're glowing? 
Is that why you're glowing? <laughs> Amen. So it, it talks about this. It says, this. let's read it again. We are away from the natural and, and we fasten our gaze onto Jesus who birthed faith within us. Within us. Who leads us forward into faith's perfection or maturity or helps us to understand these things. And then this, this little part, this next little part, his example is this. Because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his. I don't know if we get this, and I want to make sure you get this. He loves you so much, and this is what he says here, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his. Every one of you in here, he loves you so much, he wants you to know that you're his. You're his. He endured the agony of the cross, conquered its humiliation, and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. He went to the cross because he wanted everything to be sealed and that you would know his love and that nothing could ever separate you from his love. And he wants you to know that you're his. Can you say that with me? I'm his. I'm his beloved. That sounds rich, deep, and yet a lot of us don't believe it. And I, I picked out the scripture because I thought it was kind of fitting. And it has something in here that is, that is unique. I want to go down to verse 14 first. At the very bottom, you'll see it. Whoever falsely boasts of giving is like a cloud and wind without rain. And the reason I want to say it this way and I want to now go to the top is because often we really don't hear I, how do I explain this? Sometimes I can tell you all day long that God loves you, and you walk out of here and you don't even really believe it. God tells you that He loves you, but you just don't really catch it. You don't really believe it because of some, there's something blocking it. There's, your ground hasn't been broken open. Your your heart has been closed. Your wounds of your sin is trying to protect you from something which you don't even know which is the enemy and yet you don't even realize God is not a cloud. I want you to notice this. Who falsely boasts of giving. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, so he's not talking about boasting. He gave his very best so he could have a relationship with you. And that relationship with, with him now is pouring out blessings upon you that you cannot really contain. Matter of fact, I got so much of it, I got to give it away all the time. I love doing that because even standing here right now, what I'm saying to you is the reason I can say this is because God's love flows, flows, flows. Out. The anointing flows out. The Word of God flows out. And we're not serving some God who doesn't pour out blessings. He is full of blessings. And so when we read this now, I want you to notice at the top, a word fitly spoken is like an apple of gold in a setting of silver. When you really understand what God's saying, it just, it just makes sense. It's like, oh yeah, that fits. That's right. That fits right into my life. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of uh, fine gold is a wise rebuker to an obedient ear. When you start hearing God, it changes everything. Yeah. He that hath an ear, let him hear what God has to say. God loves you. Well, wait, wait a minute. You don't understand all the stuff I've gone through. Oh, yeah. And more. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So like the, gold of, uh, like the cold of snow in time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who sent him. You ever, I don't know if this, is, this has happened to me many times. I'm sitting in the presence of God and all of a sudden I start getting goosebumps. Yeah. What do they call them? Goose pimples? Goosebumps? Yeah. Pimples? No, goosebumps. <laughs> My German, yeah, comes through sometimes. But it's like you feel, wow, man. Something's going on. Man, I feel the presence of God. It's like a refreshes the soul of his master. Do you understand God wants to, to, for this service, not just to be another service. He wants to speak some things into your life and into your heart that will change you. 
So I want us to look at a little bit of history. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but and often I don't think the children of Israel got it. And I don't think sometimes we get it. So I want to kind of make sure that we get this. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, what we just talk about, about the apple hearing, you know, it's like you got to have that, that uh, and keep my covenant, and then you shall be a special treasure. I mean, do you, do you hear what God is saying here? He's saying, you'll be a special treasure to me above all the people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now, I know he's talking to the children of Israel here, but I want us to know that this is where it starts. It's like it's, it comes out of that. There's a historical lesson that God's trying to bring forth. The kingdom of priests, he never intended for two or three people or a group of people just to be priests, but he wanted everyone to be a treasure and a priest. We call it the priesthood of the believer. Now, that sounds strange when we say that, but um, according to what you believe is going to manifest out of your life. And when you understand that you're a priest and what you believe begins to impact the people around you, it impacts your family or the place you work, uh, it, it impacts everywhere you go, it, it impacts. So when you are a priesthood, when you understand that you're a priest and a priesthood of the believer, so your belief system determines the holy environment that's around you. Do you ever been to, oh gosh, Andrew, I don't know if you should say this. You ever been to some places where you go, I don't really want to go back there. Because I don't feel nothing there. There's no life here. There's nothing there. You ever been in a home or you've been around someone and you say, oh, I don't know if I want to go back there. I don't want to hang. Because there's nothing there. But when, there, when you're around someone who believes, when you're around someone who is truly a priesthood, understands the priesthood and the priesthood of the believer, something happens, a holy nation. Do you know what that means, whole or complete? And often we're afraid of God. These are the words which you shall speak to the children. This is what you should speak to them. So it, it says this very clearly. But they didn't really hear it. They got scared and backed away. Okay? We talked about that already. So I want to go to Deut Deuteronomy, and I want you to see it here in this setting. It says, for your holy people... He's talking to us because the Bible was not just written for them. It was written for us also. So you're a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself. God wants a personal relationship with us. Himself. This is not about just going to church on Sunday morning and that's it. No, it's a relational thing that is so deep. A special, there's that word again, a special treasure above all the peoples of the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you or choose you because you were more in number than any other people. Now, wait a minute. I just read something, but we can't sometimes just skip over stuff. I want to read it again. The Lord did not set his love. Do you know that you're loved? He set his love upon you. On you, nor chose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of the people, but because the Lord, what? The Lord loves you. That the Lord loves you. He didn't choose you in this room because, you, oh, you're better than somebody else. or another. He loves you. He loves you. He chose you. God loves you because he would keep the oath which he swore to his fathers. The Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. I want us to understand in some ways this is us. It's talking about being set free from Egypt, which represents the world, being set free from sin. Pharaoh, I mean, come on, who's Pharaoh? I mean, we don't want him in our lives, right? Uh, we've been set free from the horse and the rider, and he's been thrown into the sea. We've been baptized into Christ, right? These are all things where the blood of Jesus has been applied, right, in our lives. And so these are all things that we need to comprehend here, what he's communicating with us. So I want to show you some pictures. I want you to see this picture, the proof of the Red Sea. I mean, this song... Uh, some, some scholars, they, they, they argue about this thing and, and, they, and they stuff, but it, there's real proof that this actually happened. And you remember the pillar. So I'm going to talk about the pillar of fire. I'm going to talk about the cloud by day. But I want you to notice that this, this walk through the Red Sea was very significant. Matter of fact, that pillar 
what brought so much heat and dried up this place and the wind that blew into this thing was so powerful. We want to talk about the wind. We're going to talk about the fire. So hold on to those things. But I want you to notice that in the Red Sea, there are locations where the ground was, the heat was so strong that it actually just melted all of the sand and there's still footprints today. Or where the children, I mean, I could have put a bigger picture. I mean, there's a whole huge area, okay, that is just burned up. It, it looks like it's melted sand, and then there's footprints all over the place for the, where they walk through. It's amazing. And guess what they found in the Red Sea? There's a chariot. Chariot. They're, in that same location, there's still evidence of chariots. What happened to the chariots? And, and Pharaoh and all those crazy, uh, you know, that's, that's it right there. Look at it. That's, that's an actually chariot from when the children of Israel went through. This is actually a picture of Mount Sinai. And look at the top of it. Remember when the cloud and the fire came? And actually the whole top of it is, look how dark it is. The presence of God was so strong, literally, it just made it, changed its, its color. The presence of God was so strong on Mount Sinai. So, I want us to go on a little bit more. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meetings. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meetings because the cloud rested upon it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. You've seen this picture, okay? But I want you to see it. The presence of God was so strong over the tabernacle that this is what they saw. And, they, and Moses couldn't even go in to minister. I want to, I'm going to teach you some things today. Hopefully I can get to this and, 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 and help you see this. So I want to go to when, when um, Solomon was building the temple. And uh, when he finished it, he, he gave some instructions. I mean, I could go to all kinds of places, but I want to just focus on a few things. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites looked upon the ark, and then they brought the, up the ark and the, the tabernacle of meetings and all the holy furnishings that were with them. You know, we have the, the showbread, we got the lampstand, we got the, inc- the altar of incense, we got all of these things, and we got the Holy of Holies. Also, King Solomon, all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with them before the ark. It's important that we see that. It says, it says that it's, it, it's, you see this presence for sacrificing sheep and oxen that would be, by, be counted or numbered in the multitude. Then the priest brought into the, ar- the ark of the covenant of the Lord to this place in the inner sanctuary of the temple and to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubims. So we know literally all of this uh, this, this, this concept of the ark and all of this is in the Holy of Holies. So last week I talked about the heart, the soul, and the, f- the, the flesh or the body. It's important that you understand it's the same thing. There are three p- departments that we go through. It's the, the holy place, the holy of holies. You're talking about the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. And the most significant place is the holy of holies. And here we have another example of this. So it says... For the cherubim spread like their wings over the place of the ark. And the cherubim overshadowed the ark of the, with the poles. And so they brought these poles in and they carried it into this holy, holy place. The most holy place. And it says here, and I want you to, to notice the, 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 this, this, that the inner sanctuary, okay? Uh, and I want to go from the outside. And they are there this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets with Moses, but... Uh, there of of Herob, and from the Lord made covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Again, he made a covenant with them, and he's made a covenant with us. Every time we take communion, which we did last week, we talked about this covenant that God has made. He says, I make a new covenant, right? So, and it came to pass when the priests came out, the most holy place, all of the priests were there, had sacrificed. Sacrificed them, sanctified themselves without keeping their division. And it talks about all of this stuff and it talks about the harps and so forth. And it, it's important that we see this. And I don't think I need to read all of this, but it says here, clothed in white linen. Wasn't well, God says that He's going to cover us 
with his righteousness. Let me go back. I think there's a little interesting statement here that might be interesting a little bit later on. And it says, with them, 120 priests sounded with the trumpets. 120, remember that. And indeed, it came to pass when the trumpets and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in the praising and the thanking of the Lord when they lifted up their voices with the trumpet and the cymbals. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And the, the house of the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. So this is again the same thing that happened in the wilderness, now it's happening right here where they dedicated this temple, right? And they could not even minister. The priests couldn't even minister because something was happening that is, really needs to be understood. And I want to bring that out today a little bit more. It says in Matthew, and I think it's an important aspect. Now we're jumping all the way from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And we know that there was a temple there. And we know that there was that Ark of the Covenant was there, and that was the Holy of Holies. That was the place where the Ark and the presence of God was, and it was clothed off by a veil, right? So when Jesus Christ was dying on the cross, it says, Now, on the sixth hour until the ninth hour was darkness over the whole land. And behold, the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama. And, and you know, God, God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard this, they said, this must be a lie. They were confused still. They were not sure. But I want you to notice this next verse of Scripture. It says, And Jesus cried again with a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. Then he be and then, behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Something happened in the Holy of Holies. All of a sudden, it was rent from top to bottom. This was impossible. It was thick. It was, it was a veil that was trying to protect the presence of God. And we see it in the Old Testament how God was beginning to change some things around, but he was speaking to the children of Israel. He's always been speaking to us, but we got to catch this. God was releasing something, and we need to see it here. It says, torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection. I don't know how strange this is to you, but when Jesus rose from the dead, not only did he raise from the dead, but others start coming out of the graves because God promised that he is the resurrection and the life. Okay, so something supernaturally was definitely happening. So when the centurion and those who were with him were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. This is the Son of God. This is the one. They recognized something that, was, that, that, that happened that is beyond understanding, and it's supernatural. And so let's go on a little bit more. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. And what does it say there? It says here, and there were about a hundred and... Isn't that what we just read? In, uh, did we not just read that in, in the Old Testament? This is not the Old... This is the New Testament. There was 120. And I want you to notice some of the same phrasing in Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one place, in one accord, in... And they were like, there was a, they're, they were in agreement. What, what did we read in, in, in Chronicles? The same thing. There was a, a sense of God's presence, and they were all in making one sound. They were all in one, one sense and one presence there. And the oneness of God was there, and all of a sudden something happens, and suddenly there was, came a sound from heaven as they were rushing. Didn't that happen also in the Old Testament? The wind and the cloud and the fire. And I want you to notice something. Maybe you've never noticed this before. But there was a presence that came upon the tabernacle, this huge fire. And all of a sudden, something in the New Testament happens, which is so unique. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and set upon each of them. Ooh, I just felt it. I'm serious. I just, I, I got, you want to check, Todd, and see? I'm just, I, the, the thing is that, what God was doing, he says, I want to individually make you a temple. Individually, I want to bless you, and I want you to know that the favor of God is upon you, and I want you to know that you're loved. And I'm no longer going to be hiding behind some, uh, some 
some, some curtain, some veil. I'm coming out and I'm coming in to your life. I'm not just going to come upon you. I'm going to live in you. It's important that you understand what is happening here. God, I know this history and you got to understand God's plan has always for us to be his special treasure. His special people that have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people of God but now are chosen by him. A special treasure. So it says, and then they appeared to them, divided tongues as a fire, and set upon each. What does that mean? That means God is present now in their lives, and God is present in your life. This is what he did. I had no idea. She has no idea what I was preaching on. And she said, Jesus was going throughout this whole touching people. Individually touching people. Individually, the presence of God came upon each one of them, and the Holy Spirit touched each person. Think about, this is not, this is divine. Look at her, she's crying. She had no idea what I was preaching on. There's things like this sometimes that you say, that's not possible. Yet God does this thing where he divinely sets us up. One set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Now, what's all that about? Because I think it's important that we understand this, this and, and it goes on. It says, and there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. You remember Babylon. Remember when God divided because they were, they were, in a sense, in oneness towards the wrong things. And he says, nothing's going to be impossible. So he, he divided their languages or separated them. And here, on Pentecost Sunday, he brought them all back together under... I don't, I don't care. Look at all the flags that we have. It don't matter what nation, what tongue you're from... When you have a relationship with God, that means we're so connected and there's a oneness that happens. And it says here, then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these speaking Galileans? And how is that we hear each one in our own language in which we were born? God was beginning to bring oneness back into our world because he wants to make us one with him and one with each other. We have the saying here at the tree, we connect to the one until we become one. That's true community. It's important for us to see this. And so let me read on a little bit more. And it says, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? So I wanted to stop here. What does this mean to you? If you're not careful, you will not hear this, and you'll push it away. This is that God is saying, I want a personal, intimate relationship with every one of you in this room. I don't want you to ever feel like you have to come to church to have an encounter with me. I'm with you. Wherever you go, I will never leave you nor forsake you. My presence will go with you. You're like a lamp. You're not supposed to hide it under a bushel. All of a sudden, there's com- light has come into your life. The power of God's Spirit. Matter of fact, if you believe, the only way you could believe is because of the Spirit of God led you into believing. He brought you into the presence of God. He desires for you to have that experience. What does this mean? God loves you so much, he's not interested in someone else representing him. Did you hear what I just said? He doesn't want me to represent him to you. He wants to be personally involved in your life so intimately that you don't need a priest, because you're a priesthood of the believer. You already individually are so connected to God that you can say, yes, Lord, I hear you. Yes, Lord, I'm connected to you. The veil's been rent. The deception's been broken. I'm no longer out there just floundering around. You're with me. You're never going to leave me nor forsake me. I want you to notice what Peter does. You know, um, Peter stands up and he starts preaching, talking about all this stuff. And then it says here in verse 37 of Acts chapter 2, it says, Now when when they heard this, remember what we talked about. you got to hear it. you got to believe it that this is for you. The priesthood of the believer. 
hear what the Spirit has to say. They were cut to their heart. It's where it is, right here. Cut. Matter of fact, what God was doing in that moment, if you understand the circumcision of the heart, he cut the heart and says, can I come in? You're no longer a stone of a uh, heart of stone, but I'm going to make you a heart of flesh. He cuts us open in a sense. He cuts. It says here they cut, which cut means covenant. The word covenant means cut. So he's cutting our hearts, and he's saying, I want to come in. So Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So they, what, what, what we've heard, now what do we do with what we've heard? Then Peter said to them, repent. Change the way that you're thinking about yourself. Change the way that you are thinking who you are and, and, and all of your problems and all of this stuff. Don't live in fear. Don't live in doubt. Live in, in the presence and the love of God because he loves you so much. What shall we do? Then Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Identify. Identify with Jesus. He, know, he is your identity. So identify with his death. When he died, you died. When he rose, you rose. Identify that you're no longer the old, but you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Identify with the new, who you are. You are loved. You're accepted. You are your royalty now. It says here, it says, repent in the name of Jesus, remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God has called. He's called all of us. He's chosen every one of us. I don't want any to perish, but all to have eternal life. Do you, do you see this? Okay, so guess what? We're clouds. And the blessing of God needs to be just manifested in our lives. So the blessing, we've been blessed to let that blessing now flow through our lives. And we are these priesthood of believers. Don't doubt who you are. Enjoy who you are. You're a child of God. It goes on, and with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Let that stuff go. Then those who gladly received this word, again, those who heard, were baptized. Do you know that there were some who, can you imagine this? There were, there were people there who didn't get baptized. They heard, but they didn't get baptized. This is also an interesting thing. I don't, let's go back to the Old Testament. When, the, when Moses came down from the mountain, that mountain that we just looked at that was burnt at the top when he came down, there were was, there was some people that were worshiping idol. It's a calf, remember? And it, and, then, and it says very clearly that what they did is, is actually said separate. And 3,000 people, 3,000 people perished because they chose to worship not God, but something weird and strange. What are you worshiping? And look at what it says here. Then it's so strange that this stuff repeats itself. Then those who were gladly received this word were baptized, that they, and about 3,000 souls. So in the Old Testament, we see the law, it brings death, and in the Spirit, brings life for us. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. Guess what we're doing right now? We're breaking bread. I'm breaking the bread of life, and you're eating and you are going to pray in just a moment. Make this a greater reality in your life. And we'll just, and, and you know this, but I'm just going to end with this. This is the last scripture I want to read to you. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells where? In you. The veil was rent from top to bottom, and he's actually prophesying here. Jesus is saying something supernatural here. But you know him, for he dwells within you, and be in you, and I will not leave you orphans. Again, what is he saying here? So often we feel disconnected from God. We don't feel like we belong to God, and God says, no, I am your father. I am the lover of your soul. 
I've given everything that I can. I've given you every opportunity to walk in my love and in my grace because it neither sees him nor knows him for he dwells within you. I will not leave you orphans and I will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more but you will see me because I live and you will live also and that day you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. Ooh. I don't know. What are we catching this? Is this just, these are not just words. Not, I, I want you to be careful. These are not just words. You're not leaving this church today and Jesus is going to stay here and the presence of God is going to stay here. No, you, he's with you. I want you to say, at that day, you will know that I am in the Father. So where's Jesus? In the Father. And you in me and I in you. I mean, God, he's, he's, just, he's just kind of putting it all together. You no longer need in any way to believe you're separated. And you don't have to look from a distance, some fire over here, because he's dwelling upon you and in you. I'm gonna, and that day, today's that day, you will know. Do you know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you? Whew. I, uh, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. I, I did say I was not going to read another scripture. But... <laughs> or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And guess who's the priest of that temple? You. Because that's who we are. Who is in you, whom you have from God, and you're not your own. For God bought you at a price. I'm going to tell you something, and I heard this last night, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it very, very, every one of us have been bought by the precious blood of Jesus. He values you so much that he paid the price for you. He paid, not, not silver and gold or some trinket, he values you. He values you so much that he thinks you're worth, worth it. Worship. He gave his life. He sacrificed his life so you could have a personal relationship with him. And it says here, you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You belong to him and he belongs to you. He lives in you. And maybe you're not sure about that today. Maybe you're, you're not confident in that. But this is one of the things that I'm going to say to you. Believe. Let it be to you according to your faith. Do you believe this? Yes. Would you bow your heads? Kimberly, I know that I'm, I'm kind of picking on you and I don't mean to do that. Would you come and share the word again? Share the word again that you had. As we were worshiping, I saw Jesus come through the room. He was wearing a white robe. He had a brown sash across him. He never said a word. He was just quiet. And as he moved through the room, he touched every person that was in the room. As he touched people, he touched some people on the shoulder. Some people he touched on their head. But as he moved through the room, he touched them as they were on the ground praying. He touched them in the seats. He touched people that were standing. And I could see people in beds, and he was doing the same thing. He just moved through so quietly, but touched every person. Let God touch you right now. You know, some people talk about that Jesus dying on the cross was the, uh, was the biggest tragedy of life. No, it was the greatest blessing for us because what he did is he conquered hell, death, and the grave. He conquered sin. We no longer have in any way have to worry about sin in our lives because he destroyed it. 
We no longer have to worry about that we're orphans or that we're disconnected from him because he loves us and he calls us his children. And he actually says this in, 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 in John 3, 16. It says, he that believes this shall not perish. This is what it says. He that believes, he who does not believe, but this is one of the things that we are declaring. We believe. We believe. We believe this is the truth, that God has touched each and every one of us. So I want to get us away. I'm going to try to say this. I want us to get away from this, this thing of letting someone else be responsible. The Holy Spirit is in you. He wants to move through you. He wants to empower you. He wants to lead you into all truth. He wants to go with you. And everywhere you go, He goes. You don't have to go back into... And I, I know I'm, pre, I'm saying this. It's not about coming to church. It's not about hearing me. It's about hearing the Holy Spirit in you. It's about following God, not man. It's allowing that truth to come into you in such a way that you will never be the same. Matter of fact, when you go home this afternoon, He's going to be there with you. When you drive in your car, you're going to sense His presence in a supernatural way. You're going to start noticing this in your life. How many of you want that? Come on, how many of you want that? Look, I know it's kind of funny. We're driving down the street out there, and I saw you coming off a of 75, and I'm wondering, what is this bike in the back of his car, you know? And Grandpa, right there, and he comes right next to me, and he waves, and he says, I'll see you in church. I'll see you in church. The thing is that it doesn't matter where we are. We're going to run into opportunities. We're going to run into the presence of God. Come on, how many of you want that? If you want that, let's stand. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. How many of you have been convicted, cut in your heart, that you, you know this is a covenant thing between you and God? This is so personal that you never have to worry about someone else representing you. He is the one that's living in you. He's the one that is manifesting. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is right here with us. Right here with us. Let's just lift up our hands. In oneness. Come on, in oneness. Lord, we desire your presence. We're tearing. We're waiting for you, Lord Jesus, to truly manifest yourself through our lives. We yield to you. We don't belong to ourselves. We're a special treasure special treasure in earthen vessels. Lord, we know we want you in. We open our hearts and our lives to you. From this day forward, let the flame of God in the presence of God and the cloud of God be upon us. Thank you for giving. And thank you for reigning upon us. Your grace, your love, your mercy, thank you for breaking the curse. We're not orphans. We're sons and daughters of God. Put your hand right over your heart. I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells in me. He lives in me. It's in Him that I live and move and have my being. The breath that I breathe is from you, Lord. And everything that I am is for your glory and for your honor. Shine through me, Lord. Accomplish your purpose. And I receive again greatest gift, your love, your love, thank you for loving me, God's doing stuff right now, he's healing your heart, he's healing your past, he's taking care of things, he's taking care of doubt, misunderstandings. From this day forward, Lord, help me to hear. Help me to hear, really, not the accusations, but the truth of who you are in me. 
I will not listen to the devil. I will not listen to a liar. I will listen to the truth. And the truth will set me free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, you got a song? bless you. Oh, you're so blessed. May you know that you're blessed. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. Lord, you want us just to know that our identity is in you. Let your face, your identity be so upon each and every one of us. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. Lord, help us to truly know the grace of God that has been bestowed upon us. Lord, I release them in your favor. Lord, let them go out as clouds, clouds of blessings to this community, to their families. And Lord, I ask that you would set, begin to saturate their homes, their lives. And I declare, I declare this day that you're going to begin to see changes. There's going to be changes in your life, changes in your family, changes in your home, changes with the things that you desire, the things that you long for, because the Holy Spirit's in you. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit in you. You're going to begin to long for things, have a desire for the truth, wanting to pursue those things. You're going to make a difference at your work. People are going to see that you're not ashamed. You're just going to stand up and declare lovingly that you are a follower of Jesus. You're a believer. You believe. You believe. And our belief determines our destiny. We believe. We're the priesthood of believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.